Hello everyone, this is John Buck back with the third video in our uh, story about continuous time Fourier series and filtering. This is the third video as I said, so that assumes you've watched the first video about the overview and the second video showing how I, uh, giving me the A sub k's and also finding the B sub k's, the output Fourier series coefficients from the input ones. So I left you at that last video in a mathematical cliffhanger, right? We had, uh, we had we had just found the output Fourier series coefficients, B sub k, but we'd finished step two in this roadmap here. But step three we still had to do, and that's what this video will cover, which is once I have those B sub k's, how do I get back and figure out what my time domain waveform looks like? Uh, so let me uh, get back to where we were and pick up our story. In our last episode, our hero had found that B sub k was equal to one quarter for k equals zero, root 2 over 2 pi for k equals plus or minus 1, or 0 for all the other k's. This last term he had found was due to the exciting discovery that the filter was 0 outside of the passband, so all the harmonics from k equals 2 upwards or downwards were set equal to 0. Okay, enough with silly movie voice. We're on to step 3 here, though, in all seriousness, to find the output signal now that we have the y sub t's, and we do this using the Fourier series synthesis equation. That equation says that the output y sub t is equal to the sum as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of b sub k e to the j k omega naught t. Right, so now I'm just going to plug in these b sub k's I found to this sum for each value of k going from minus infinity to plus infinity, I'm going to plug them in. So if I write out the sum, and again, I'll, I'll use the color maybe here to reflect those different k's. Let me clean that up for a second, and then I'll write it out. So again, emphasizing it's the same k for each of these, I just go through that sum is like a for loop in a computer program, just plugging each one in. Right, so as I start plugging them in, I put in, you know, k equals minus 3, minus 2. I'm going to start by showing just the, uh, the minus 2 term. So here's b minus 2, or k equals minus 2. I get this, plus uh, when k is minus 1, I get this. And just going on when k is 0, I get, B, you know, I add b sub 0 to e to the j omega naught, uh, e to the j 0 times omega naught t, and then plus the k equals 1 term. I think I put this on a new line to make space. So that's my uh, my first harmonic, and then my second harmonic, and so on like that. I could add more and more terms. On um, on this one, I'm just going to stop with the, all the terms from minus two to two because I know from my values that these are the only ones that are not. These include all the non-zero terms in this sum, right? We know once I get above two or below minus two, everything is zero, and the, all these b's are zero, so the terms will zero out. So now if I go plug in for each of these b sub k terms. And I can simplify some things too as I do it. So let me do that. Well, I get all the terms before this right are zero because the b's are zero. In fact, this b here is zero. So that term, the k equals uh, minus two term is zero. And again, you don't have to label every term on your homework or in class, but I'm doing that here to help people see what's going on. I get to b of minus one. I get the root two over two pi and plug that in. Right, and this this minus 1 just gives me an e to the minus j omega naught t. Moving on to the k equals 0 term, I get b sub 0, which was a quarter from up here, and then e to the 0 omega naught t is just 1. Stepping along for the b1 term, I also have the root 2 over 2 pi. So that's k equals 1, and as I keep going for k equals, uh, I, have the, I have k equals 2, this term here, well, b sub 2 will be 0 again, as will all the ones after it. So I can also say, well, this, this term here is also going to 0. So it doesn't even matter about that exponential. I'll write the 0 down here for completeness. But all these other terms will be 0 too. Right, so if I look at that, I've, I've sort of written out all the terms. And this is, we know, for k greater than 2, they're all 0. For k less than minus 2, they're all 0. 
And I've detailed this much more than you really need to as long as you're careful working it out. Because we could have pretty much just looked at this from the start with a little practice. Say there's only going to be three terms that are non-zero. And so that's what I'm going to write out now. Which after you've had some practice you can go right to this line. Right, so those are the only non-zero terms in this sum. E to, root 2 over 2 pi e to the minus j omega naught t from the k equals minus 1 term. From the k equals plus 1 term I have this and a quarter. And looking at that, the k equals 1 and minus 1 terms, I'm like, oh, that's an Euler's relationship. I'm adding complex exponentials with equal amplitudes and opposite signs. And so I can pull those two together using Euler's and simplify this a little further. Right, so I'd say if I pulled that root 2 over 2 out front, I'd be left with e to the j omega naught t, e to the minus j omega t. Adding them together gives me 2 cosine, and then I could cancel these 2's. So I'm left with root 2 over pi cosine omega naught t for the stuff in blue plus that quarter. So let me uh, write that down as my final answer. Okay, so this is saying basically that my out, if I run my... Uh, going back to the start, I run my square wave input through a low-pass filter. The output would be this DC value of a quarter plus a, a cosine. And maybe now, just at the end, is when I'll put in omega naught. I, you know, I want to call attention to that sort of pro tip. I usually find I make fewer mistakes if I wait to the end to put in omega naught. So this is cosine of pi over 4t. Because omega naught, was I got from, from way back at the start, my, pi over, my omega naught was pi over 4. Right? All the way back here, if I back up a couple pages, omega naught is pi over 4. It's saying if I took this input and ran it through the system whose frequency response is this, and we'll see in a few weeks, this is something that's a sync function in time. So it's also like saying if I convolved this square wave with the sync function, the cutoff at, at or sync of 3 pi over 8t, uh, I'd end up with this dc value plus a cosine of pi over 4t coming out. I could go plot that in MATLAB or even try to graph it by hand if I worked out roughly what the decimals were. But it would basically be something that still had period 8 from the cosine oscillating above and below a DC value. So uh, root 2 over pi is about 0.45. So this thing would approximately be 0.25 plus 0.45 cosine pi over 4t. So I'll make a quick sort of cartoonish sketch of that. So when I sketch this, this is a, sine, a single cosine that hits a peak at 0.7 at 0 and then at 8 and minus 8 over here. It hits its minimum at 4 or minus 4 because when t is 4, this is cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So I have minus 0.25 minus 0.45. So this would be about minus uh, 0 0.2 at, at those minimums. And halfway in between, the dc value is 0.25. Right, so this is what would come out of that square wave being run through a low-pass filter, just the lowest frequencies, the DC and the fundamental in this case, because the cutoff frequency at 3 pi over 8 lets the fundamental through. We saw the k equals 1 and minus 1 terms, but not the others. Okay, so to, to go back to where we started in our overview, we've just finished step 3, right? So we've finished this whole process of, of doing the filtering in three steps, And if I scroll to that original sort of diagram I drew, we've, we've come down here to find the a sub k's. We did step two here, filtering them, and we've drawn back to the synthesis. So we've done this work sort of walking around the block to get the output purely in terms of using the eigenfunction property and filtering to avoid doing the convolution of h of t with the impulse response I never really showed you, but it would have been a sync function. It would not have been a fun integral. All right, so that covers this this the, this sort of three-part series. Try to break everything down as clearly as I could, step by step of going through the filtering process. The Fourier series will definitely get practice of this in class and with homework. But that's all for today. I'll see you next time.